you know, I've been thinking about death quite a bit recently, you know, and that's that's not a uncommon thing, honestly. I think about death a lot, actually. I think it may be because my birthday is approaching. You know, death has been weighing heavy on the mind, you know? And um, I suppose that happens every birthday, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you know, birthdays are a bittersweet thing, you know? You're, you're getting older and stuff, but... You know, and people are celebrating you and all, but, you know, you're one step closer. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're getting one step closer to the end. And, you know, I, I have an interesting view of death. I don't know. Like, I don't really uh, entirely know how I perceive it, to be honest. I mean, I'm not quite afraid of it, but it's not like I want it to happen, you know? Just because I'm not afraid of it does not mean I'm calling for it. You know, but, um, hmm. Yeah, death is a tricky thing, right? It's so interesting. We don't know what we we don't quite know what happens, you know. I guess I suppose if you uh, believe in certain religions, you have some sort of idea in your mind of what happens. Maybe that's why people believe in religions in the first place. You know what I mean? As some sort of comfort, as some sort of coping coping mechanism. You know, some sort of copium. But I, I don't really believe that, honestly. I feel like religions are far too old for such a thing. You know. I don't know. I feel like there's something deeper than just, oh, people only believe in this religion so they can cope with death or the idea of death, the mystery of death. You know what I mean? I think that's silly. But um, I do think it's a factor. Um, Yeah, I do. But man, I don't know. I feel like, you know, I'm not afraid of death. I don't want it to happen, obviously, because I feel like death is probably quite boring. You know, I have no idea what death is like. But, um, I, I can't say I'm afraid of it. I, I can't. I've experienced, um, very close calls with death many times, actually. And, um, I say I'm not afraid of it because every time I was convinced that I was about to die, uh, I just accepted it. I feel like I've always accepted death. I feel like I, in a way we are all already dead because it's what's coming. You know, it is the inevitable. There is no way around it. It is already written for all of us. And that's all there is to it. You know, like, yeah, I just feel like I've already died. I'm already in a way we're already there, you know, and, you know, our futures are not certain, but death is death is very certain. And. You know, I don't want to see the people around me die, I would say. I, I don't, I feel like that's what I would uh, like the least, you know what I mean? Uh, more than myself dying, because that simply is what it is. But the, re the real tragedy is having to witness the people around me dying. And maybe dying before them wouldn't be such a bad thing, you know what I mean? Because you don't have to witness that, but then they have to witness your death. So that's not particularly a good thing either, but... Yeah, yeah, I guess that would be a selfish way to see it, you know what I mean? You you just want to die early so you wouldn't have to. Yeah, that, that's pretty selfish, but yeah, um, death. It's a tricky thing, isn't it? It's so tricky. Yeah. My most recent encounter with um, death was actually, um, I almost drowned a few months ago. I almost drowned, and... I just told myself in my head, um, I remember just saying to myself, uh, I'm about to die right now. I just, that's all I said. That's the only thing that came into my mind. And I was 100% certain that I was about to die. Like, it was over. Yep, I can't swim. And I was sinking in frigid cold water at the base of a waterfall. And I was 100% certain that, yep, this is the end. And I just told myself, uh, I didn't panic. I did nothing. I just, I just told myself, I'm really about to die right now. This, this all that um, came to my mind. And um, I went. I was with somebody who just happens to be a scuba instructor, and he and his brother actually got in and saved my life, which is just absurd. Cause I, I could have been with anybody. You know, I could have been with anybody that just so happens to not be a scuba instructor, and they probably would not have had the strength and the skills to save my life in that position. So I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky, you know. But um Yeah. How generous. And you know, I've had other situations as well. I've stared down the barrel of multiple guns in my life. I've been uh, caught in shootouts. I've been uh yeah, I've I've 
have been, you know, I'm no stranger to almost dying, actually. It's, it's not a foreign concept to me at all, you know? But, I don't know. I, I, don't, I can't say I, I feel any particular fear towards it. I, I don't want it to happen, but I can't say I'm afraid of it. You know, like life, life is a process. And in that process, there is death. And that's all there is to it. There is no life without death. Um, our deaths give the chance for other people to have the uh, the chance to experience life. You know, this great thing, you know, and, and a lot of people have this very nihilistic mindset of, oh, well, we're all going to die. Why well, enjoy life anyways? We're all going to die. You know, I feel like that's stupid. You know, like, well, you're not going to have fun at a party because eventually the party will end. You know, you're not going to like, of course, all things need to come to an end at some point. Right. Even life that is what it is. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try. or You shouldn't enjoy it along the way. Just, you know, it's going to happen. And that's all there is to it. It's part of the process. Without death, life means what? You know, does it mean a whole lot? Does it even have much value? The fact that things are, are temporary, they don't last forever. That's what gives it a lot of its value, you know? It's uh, like exclusivity in a way. And we have very, you know, it's 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 limited. And that's why you need to enjoy it, because you have limited time. Have so instead of um, frowning upon it and letting it get to your head, enjoy it while you have it. You know, just enjoy it while you, enjoy it while it lasts. It doesn't last forever. So make the most of it. That's why you need to make the most of it. That's why you should try your hardest every single day to do the most that you can do and be your best self. Because um, it doesn't last forever. None of nothing is going to last forever. So yeah, just keep living until you can't. <laughs> but yeah. It is what it is, man. I feel like I used to I used to be pretty afraid of death. Um, when I was younger. Like it's all I would think about when I was like trying to go to sleep. I would just think about, you know, oh shit, all this is gonna end one day. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna have to watch everybody around me die. This sucks. But after a certain point, you know, you you just kind of like uh come to accept it for what it is as you get older, you know, you just accept it. And um yeah, you know, a lot of younger people are not very religious. I think it's because a lot of religions go against everything young people wish to do, you know? And this, this, I feel like that's the primary reason, you know? People want to, like, go out and party and have sex and, like, do drugs and, like, do all this crazy shit. And religions, like, really speak directly against that type of shit for the most part. And that's why young people uh, rebel against it so hard. But, um... I think as people get older and they experience life more, they tend to uh, gravitate more towards religion. And it may perhaps it is because they're getting uh, closer to death and it is some sort of coping mechanism. It could be, you know, I can't speak for everybody that's religious or not. And not everyone that gets older uh, gravitates towards religion. But, you know, I, I have noticed it. It is. It, it certainly is a thing. But um, I can't speak for everybody at the end of the day, and I'm sure there are outliers. And I'm sure the outliers will let me know in the comments. I'm different. I'm different. No, it's not me. Not me. No, of course. I'm, I'm never talking about everybody. Not everything is in absolutes. Not everything is black and white, you know. There's like gray areas to everything. So, yeah. But, um. Yeah, man. I don't know. I think death is interesting. I think it's a very interesting topic. I feel like it's a topic a lot of people don't like to talk about. I think the more people think about it, they get, uh, they start to like panic in their head. You know, or the the idea of death may come to them at night and start to spook them. You know, but I don't think uh, I don't think it's healthy to be afraid of it. I think uh, you just need to accept it, and um, don't see it as such a bad thing. You know, I don't think I don't think death necessarily is a bad thing because I don't think life can exist without it in, in any way, shape, or form. So, you know, as much as you enjoy life, you should uh, <laughs> to some extent, or as much as you appreciate life, I should say, you should to some extent appreciate death. Because without that, there is no life. And there will be nothing to appreciate. So yeah, you know. Alright, let me eat some fish in front of this waterfall and just enjoy the world of World of Warcraft. Or enjoy the world of Warcraft? Enjoy the world... Okay, anyways. Yeah, man. This game is a very refreshing game. You know, I think it's kind of like a blast to the past. 
this game. It's like a snapshot of the good old days. You know, you, you kind of get to relive um, this once so good thing, you know, this like time where things were so simple, you know? And I think that's why so many, it's the nostalgia factor, you know? So many people, you know, people, how old is this game? It's, it's so old, yet here we are still all playing it and doing the same thing we've been doing for years and it just seems to never get old. Um, I, I feel like that's interesting, you know? A lot of people like to relive things rather than create new experiences. And maybe, maybe that all ties in with the fear of the unknown, which I feel is the strongest fear, you know? in all of us is the fear of the unknown and that's it ties right back into death that's why death is so scary to to people because you don't know what happens and yeah but but i just uh i wish i saw more people trying new things and giving things like a genuine shot and you know when a lot of people try new things like a new game for example let's say like uh someone's looking for a new mmo to replace world of warcraft because they've been playing it for years they don't want a new MMO, they just want a new World of Warcraft. But World of Warcraft is still here, it is what it is, you know? So, it's just interesting to me, you know? They just want to replace their thing. You know, they, they want something to take its place. Uh, but it can't. It just You just need a new experience. And give it a genuine shot and don't try to look for the thing, the old thing in the new thing. Just appreciate the new thing for what it is. Because when you played World of Warcraft for the first time, or you did something that you ended up enjoying but for the first time you didn't particularly look for something else in it you just did it to do it and you ended up thoroughly enjoying it so just try to do it again you know i feel like um simply enjoying things you don't see it happen too often anymore just enjoying something for what it is you go to a concert or an event or a monument or you know some type of scenic place and everyone's got their phones out everyone's you know no one's living in the moment anymore no one wants to live in the moment you know they just want to show others that they had the moment but they don't want to live it themselves at that point what's it even worth you know like, what was it worth? You didn't even enjoy it while you were there. Oh, but you have the video on your phone. Oh, but you got some likes for it. Like, people in these damn social media numbers, like, Not enough it's insane. Me. You know, like, it's like, it's just weird. It's trippy. You know what I mean? You look at old videos and it's everyone just living in the moment. And that's how it was like when I was younger. I mean, like, we had phones and stuff, but, like, we didn't where I grew up at least, like not everybody had smartphones. I mean, I'm 22, I did get to briefly experience the, the age where not everyone had their face in their phones all the time. I got to experience it briefly and it was nice. It was super nice, man. People were a lot more uh, grounded, you know, like um, in touch with reality, not terminally online, not suffering from extreme brain rot. It was a nice time, <laughs> you know, it was a, it was a pretty nice time. And there are still places where you can experience that in the world, of course, you know, I'm just thinking of it with my Western mind. But yeah, man, I don't know. A part of me just wishes that we could have that back in some way, but it will never be back. And it is only going to get far worse than it is now in the future. So, but yeah, man, you know, I feel like we're really going to have that like Wally -E type of world, you know? Where, like, everyone's just, like, some fat, lazy bum who's too lazy to even use their feet anymore and everything is just at the tip of your fingers and, you know, you don't need to go to the grocery store anymore. You can just get it delivered with Instacart and you don't need to go get food anymore, period, because you have all these food apps and you don't need to even attract a girl anymore because you have pornography everywhere and OnlyFans and all these other things and you don't need to go to the gym anymore because you have an oculus with the workout app and you don't need to you know what i mean it's just we're gonna be these or like these cave dwelling socially inept creatures but our caves will be our homes and it is terrifying and we're already seeing glimpses of it i mean interacting with a kid that was born after like 2007 is goddamn impossible. They're the most socially awkward, socially inept, freaking weirdo freaks. 
I've ever met. You know what I mean? It's freaking weird. And, and the parents are at fault as well. They're so lazy. And they have all these iPad babies. They can't even raise their own kid anymore. They have some freaking app that is brainwashing your, ch your, your child. Raising the child. And it's insane. You know, AI has already replaced us. They're raising our, our children. And they have for quite some time. And who built all these these programs, these big corporations? So then you wonder why all these kids are always like on TikTok and like slaves to all these little micro cultures that we have. It's because these corporations that built these programs, they're what raised your child, not even you anymore, not even the parents. They have more control. And then they get sent to these schools where these other uh, ideologies and these agendas are all pushed onto the children as well and it's just this whole thing and some people see a problem with it and some people don't as long as it fits their political agenda they're okay with it but i think everyone needs to just you know accept the fact that we shouldn't push any sort of agenda on children we should let children be children and experience life and form their own opinions on stuff i don't think you should force any ideas or beliefs onto a child i think you should let a child live it, live their life and experience, you know, experience their experiences, form their own experiences and form their own opinions. That's what my parents did, at least, you know, um, my, my parents didn't force any political agenda on me. You know, their political ideologies or religious ideologies. None of that was ever pushed. And my mom told me it's because she wants me to live my life and form my own opinions. And, and come to my own conclusions about things. And it's okay if we disagree. That's all, you know, it's it's, it's okay. We're go Naturally, we should disagree because we grew up in very different ways. We've lived very different lives. We shouldn't come to the same conclusion after living such different lives. It is okay to disagree with people, especially your parents, even, even your loved ones. You don't have to agree with everybody. It's okay, as long as you let it be okay, you know? But if you only want to be in an echo chamber and surround yourself by people that agree with you, then it may not be okay, right? It may not be so okay. So, yeah. And I don't think that's healthy at all. I don't, I don't think there is any growth in ideas in, or any um, evolution within an echo chamber. It's just, um, I don't know, people just validating themselves and I don't know. There's no growth. There's no growth. You need confrontation to grow. You need some sort of um, resistance, some sort of tension, some sort of something to to truly grow and evolve. You know, something to challenge what you believe. You know what I mean? You, you need other ideas, opposing ideas. To, oh, my God. What? The whole freaking zoo is out here, bro? I got the whole jungle on my body, too. I'm going to die here. Oh, no. Yo, dude, help. Please, please. What are you doing? Why would you just do this to me? Please. No, 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 no. Oh. Okay, kill that. Oh my god. Please. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, stun it. Run away. He's going to take aggro. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh man, he's such a hero. He's such a hero. Yes. Oh, I got to stun it. Stun it, stun it, stun it, stun it. Nice. Okay. Cool. No. Oh my god. That's why I love this game, though. Much I freaking love this game. Just like small things like Inventory that. Small little <laughs> meaningless interactions like that. Let me go stealth. But yeah, stuff like that, man. It makes this game so fun. Like wholesome little interactions like that. I can't but um, anymore. anyways, what was I saying, bro? Inventory I was saying something like really meaningful and impactful and profound, I, I bet, right? Something like revolutionary, I'm sure. Totally forgot, though. Oh yeah, disagreeing with people and stuff. Yeah, it's it's okay to disagree with people. I don't think it's a crime. I really don't. I don't think it's a crime at all. My generation grew up with the block button. So they don't really know how to accept disagreements. They don't really know how to confront that. They don't know how to have like a constructive conversation and meet some sort of uh, middle ground where they can discuss their disagreements and respectfully disagree or maybe even like uh, cultivate some sort of new idea, some sort of like middle ground idea or find some sort of common ground in general. Um, yeah, but a lot of people don't really know how to do this anymore. That skill is lost. It's, it all just ties in with the uh, the art of conversation. And it's a skill, man. It, it really is a skill. Um, communication. It's a skill and I feel like it's um, it's withered away so much over time. It's so lost with our generation. People are so awkward and unpleasant to speak to. 
and they get so attached to their ideas and their ideas become uh like part of their identity and then if you disagree with their ideas they take it personally because they feel personally attached to these ideas so you know if you disagree with something that they you know even something like political or something they feel like it's some sort of attack on them or like you want them to stop existing or you hate them or they are feel obligated to now hate you and you're on that side and they're on this side and now nobody can agree with each other uh i just don't believe in that I don't believe in that at all. And then they want to silence people or segregate themselves from people that think otherwise. And I don't think that's healthy at all. You know, I think we should always uh, like be united to some extent and try to find a common ground. You know, I think that that should always be the goal. Um, yeah, man, that should always be the goal of society. I don't understand why it's so difficult. People, um, inventory is full. I don't know. They just, um, I don't know. I feel like that is uh, what happens when you, you have this very tribalistic society that is very um, divided at the moment. We have a very uh, divided society. Not a lot of people can, you know, we're, we're not united on so many fronts, you know, and it's it's I, I would say the biggest is um, currently just like political views since they can entail so many things, you know, um, it's so unfortunate though because so many people they have so much potential to uh make things happen you know working together and make make great things happen they will never speak to each other because of something so small as just like a political difference and i think that's very unfortunate i feel like a lot of people you know they don't agree with my politics especially like with the environment i'm in like this like online culture youtube and stuff and like games I play, you know, like I, I bet people that play World of Warcraft, since it's like usually an older crowd, they would agree with a lot of my political takes. But people that play like Dead by Daylight and stuff, or like a lot of those popular Twitch games like Valorant and stuff, oh no, 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 they probably hate me. Well, I don't hate them. I have no animosity towards anybody that uh, believes anything that uh, I don't particularly believe in, unless I feel like it's directly harmful to people. But even then, I don't know, because that's subjective. You know, harmful, the word harmful has lost so much so much meaning these days, you know? It's like, what even is that? No, nobody can quite define it, and people have, like, different interpretations on what's harmful and what's not. Something I may feel is harmful to people, uh, somebody else may not, you know? It's just, um, it's kind of hard to pinpoint. That's why I don't like uh, the term harmful language, you know, when platforms use that to, like, ban certain creators. It's like, oh, because the creator used uh, harmful terminology, harmful language. Well, what is harmful? It's such a broad term. It's so, like, I don't know, ambiguous. It's so, it, like, what it, what is it? What What is harmful? What's harmful to you may not be harmful to somebody else. You know what I mean? So I think that's really tricky. I think that's incredibly tricky. I don't know. It's just unfortunate that so many people uh, seem to kind of just like hate each other. That's very unfortunate, huh? But it is. It just is what it is. I guess you you can't expect everybody to get along, you know. And like I said, tension is good to some extent. So maybe it's all a good thing that people don't agree, you know. I don't know the long-term effects of like very um, divisive rhetoric in a very divided society and stuff. Maybe, maybe the end is something good. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? Is there any way to know? Maybe we can analyze history and and see like similar civilizations that have had like you know maybe they fell because of something like this. And if they did, then I'm sure. No, I, I, I was gonna say I'm sure it would have been corrected by now, but that's that's a lie. It probably it wouldn't it wouldn't stop energy. anything. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting to me watching uh, things unfold. I think um, yeah, I don't know, man. I think history is a very important thing to learn. I think it's one of the most important things uh, one can learn is history, especially world history. Yeah, I think uh, history is very slept on as a topic. I see history being associated with like right wing and like alt right conservatism, blah blah blah, like all that stuff. Uh, if you think that learning history um, is a trait of somebody who is right wing, uh, like some right wing radical, I think you are an idiot, and I think you're part of the problem, and I think you're not. Um, <laughs> representing you or what you stand for very well at all because if being ignorant um is uh you know a a trait of your 
side. Well, goddamn, I don't think that's very good, you know what I mean? History is knowledge. It's so important to, to learn about history. I feel like the people of America, the United States, right? I feel like we have neglected ourselves tremendously when it comes to learning about history. The meaning and importance of learning history has been completely lost. And we do learn history in school, but we don't we don't learn accurate history. We don't learn world history for the most part. It's it's an optional class, at least in my curriculum, it was optional. And even then, our world history is very poor. It's very vague. You don't learn a whole lot. You don't learn meaningful shit. I feel like a lot of people in America hate America because they learn American history and, you know, they learn all the bad things and they say, oh, well, America is terrible. Oh, my God. This country was built on the backs of slaves and, oh, my God, America is so bad. They did this and they did that. Oh, no, it's so bad. They don't learn about the history of other places. They don't learn that all these other countries were built uh, under a very similar foundation. And you see so many American people, and I always uh, like bring this up, is you see so many American people, especially young people, especially, you know, liberals who like are into anime and uwu Japanese culture. A lot of American people, especially young people, they like to fantasize, romanticize, and praise Japanese culture. But then they, they'll turn around and say they hate America. America bad, America bad, oh no, America's evil. But they'll praise, they'll praise Japanese culture. They'll praise Japan. Don't you think that's so interesting? For, for the people out there that know about the history of Japan, <laughs> Don't you find that to be so funny? Japan is responsible for some of the most heinous crimes against humanity in the history of mankind. And a lot of the most atrocious things that Japan has subjected people to wasn't even that long ago. It, it really wasn't even that long ago. It's World War II, that, that wasn't very long ago. Like in the grand scheme of history, it wasn't very long ago. You know? All these people that praise Japanese culture, you know, they have all the anime tattoos and they say America bad, America bad, but you know, they're all into the uwu, cutesy Japanese shit, right? How much do you think they know about Imperial Japan? How much do you think they know about Unit 731? How much do you think they know about the rape of Nanking? How much do you think they know? They, they've never even heard of these things. Imperial what? Unit, huh? <laughs> they don't know what this stuff is. But they'll praise Japan. They'll praise that shit. And they'll say America's so bad, but here they go. Praising Japan. It's just ignorance. And this is why I think world history is important. Because when you only learn about the atrocities that your country committed, uh, of course you're gonna breed this like animosity towards your own country and think your own country's this terrible thing. Because you need you need perspective though. That's the problem is they they learn all about everything bad America has done, but not everything bad all these other countries have done. They think committing atrocities is like something exclusive to America. <laughs> like you have no idea. It's too far away. It's kinda sad. Honestly. I just wish more people would learn about world history. I've studied world history thoroughly. I've taken so many uh world history classes in, in um college. A lot of, uh, you know, African history, European history, Asian history, lots of documentaries on my own free time and stuff as well. I've always been, like, very invested in, in history. It's always just been a very interesting topic to me. I think it's one of the most um, important things to learn. Because uh, history, I mean, it's, it's, it's all the events that led us to where we are today, around the world, you know? And you can't say that doesn't matter. You can't say that doesn't have significant importance. You can't say it doesn't. It, it's the road that has led us here. Every single thing we have and every single thing we believe has been shaped by history. All of us have been shaped by history. And to, to not want to learn about that, to neglect that very important subject matter, it's such a disservice to yourself, honestly. Like, that's how I see it. It's a disservice to yourself. It truly is. 
I mean, why would you not want to learn about that? How is that not interesting? I think Latin roots are very important as well. I think sociology is incredibly important. Uh, like communication, just learning how to communicate with people, etc. I think uh, learning about culture, that just ties back in with sociology. But I think all this stuff is incredibly important. And a lot of people say college is a scam. And to some extent it is, but I don't think college really is a scam. Um, you know, college is more about becoming a well-rounded person. That's what my mother always told me. Because I would say, oh, college is a scam and it doesn't guarantee a job and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? But it's not about, you know, it guaranteeing you the job and all this stuff. It's it's really about the experience. You come out of college a more well-rounded person because you get to learn about so many different things. And yes, you probably could have learned it online, but, you know, college is it's more of a structured learning of those things. Because if you try to learn everything on YouTube, there's no guarantee that you'll actually stick to it, you know. So it's a structured thing. And it, 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 you have the opportunity to test uh, how much you've learned, truly, with these tests and exams and essays and stuff like that. You get to write about it. And um, I think it's important. I think it is important. I don't think college is a scam, which may be a hot take. I think you come out of it. it, it, it well, college really is what you make of it. To some, it is a scam. Because they go for bullshit. They go for something they're not interested in. They learn a bunch of shit they're not interested in. And they come out almost goddamn dumber and more brainwashed than when they came in. They just come out hating white people and hating capitalism. Like, that's like, from, from my experience, like, that's what so many people, they can't get a job, they hate white people, they hate capitalism, and they're miserable. That's like, that's so many, so many, like, um, college people that I know, like, that's just like the state they're in. But I take classes I, I enjoy that interest me, you know, human sexuality, African history, all these things. I want to learn about stuff uh especially sociology sociology is my bread and butter i've been studying it for years even like outside of college um sociology i think is one of the most important things a person can learn hands down it's up there with like yeah i think it should be like a foundational subject for all people everywhere sociology i think uh learning sociology really helps put things in perspective for you it really broadens your world view and helps you understand people a lot better than if you didn't learn about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> and I think the biggest thing with sociology is uh, learning about culture. Culture, culture, culture. Culture is very important. And not a lot of people understand culture. And I think a lot of our racial division in this country comes from people, or I, I guess stems from people's lack of understanding of culture. I feel like that's a topic for another video I would get more in-depth in when I can actually like write my thoughts down and have like concise thoughts and... You know, like get to a point. I feel like I'm kind of just rambling right now because it's late and I'm playing a game. So, you know, I can't really uh, put precisely what I want to say in like the best way possible. The most understandable way as well. I'm kind of just vibing right now using probably like, I don't know, like 60% of my brain actually like speak and put sentences together and stuff. But yeah, man, I, I just feel like um, learning more about culture would really help. That ability is um, with this racial tension we've got going on in this country a lot of people they simply just do not understand culture and culture is pervasive culture affects so many things culture affects what you think smells good culture affects so much, the way you dress the way you speak your values it affects so much and people don't understand it people think that culture is just like how you dress and what you listen to they don't even and they think it's like exclusive to certain racial groups <laughs> it's like peak ignorance man it really is peak ignorance and and those two things alone have caused so many problems for people you know they see a white person dressing oh he's dressing black he's trying to be black like no maybe he just grew up around a bunch of black people and like that's just how he knows to dress because that's what he was exposed to his entire life and that's his culture it's a white person with black culture. Yes, it's possible because culture is not exclusive to any one race. If a white person yeah, grows up target. around a bunch of black people, he's going to act like a black person, dude. Or what you perceive to be, you know, the behaviors and acts of a black person. He's going to be that because it's what he grew up around. And people are a product of their environments. This is how it goes. It's culture, man. It's culture. I already have some videos about culture. I have like two where I really get in depth on it. 
I don't feel like repeating myself. But yeah, man, a lot of people just don't understand these things. They don't understand. And um, I get in debates a lot <laughs> about culture. And people speak so confidently about it. And my reply is always, well, I study this. You know, I went to school for this. I, I learned about this. I've studied this extensively. All right, for a very long time now. What have you done? Because I know what I'm saying is rooted in sociology. So I don't really particularly want to discuss these types of things with people that haven't studied it to the same extent. Because source, bro, like what, like what are you talking about? And a lot of people, they just speak about things so ignorantly. They don't, they don't think that like learning about it in some sort of like formal way uh, is relevant to them. I think that's silly. I think you should do your due diligence, you know, try to learn things before you speak on them. So especially so confidently and to just like blatantly say somebody is wrong, you know, to, to tell me I'm wrong about what I'm saying about culture whilst spending zero time studying culture is kind of like i i don't even know like where you get the, the gall to do such energy. a thing it's just like i said peak ignorance all it is yeah, i gotta fight his ass let's get into it but yeah i think um learning sociology is incredibly incredibly important oh no oh i really messed up there oh i have this for eight more seconds i am vibing let me tell you i am cruising oh yeah get me out this bitch Let's see, five silver, sweet, cool. I am curious what people's interpretations of death are. Like, you know, there's reincarnation, that idea. There's uh, the, the idea of like a heaven and hell. There's so many ideas for what happens after life. And it's very interesting to me, you know? And sometimes I, I wanna believe, like, do people truly believe in these ideas when they say, well, this is what I believe in. I wanna know, like, to what extent do you truly believe this within yourself? It's not me doubting it, I'm just genuinely curious. Like, do you truly believe that this is what happens, or is this what you would like to believe? I feel like a lot of people just say things. You know, I feel like the uh, idea of heaven brings people comfort, so they say they believe in it. But, like, how, how deep does this faith really run within themselves? Like, are they really confident that there is a heaven? I'm curious about that. And like I said, this isn't me doubting it, or doubting them. You know, this isn't me doubting the existence of heaven or the existence of their faith. It's me simply being curious. To what extent do people believe in what they say they believe in? Because I feel like it's very easy to just say things. Um, not necessarily believe in it. I just want to know, you know. Do you truly believe in it? And what do you believe? Because there are so many different ways to process uh, what happens after life, you know. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I find it really funny that so many men are like lacking in testosterone now. Isn't that really funny? You know, I had somebody in my comments recently ask me if I mew. Um, I guess it's like some TikTok thing that like fake models told to a bunch of young kids that like it's how you get a jawline by like doing something with like the roof of your tongue or some shit. I don't know. Um, but someone was talking about my jawline and was asking, do you mew? Do you mew? I was like, no, I don't mew. I don't even know what that is. It sounds stupid. It sounds like pseudoscience. I don't think that's real. I think some TikToker told you that shit was real and you bought into it. Um, no, I don't mew. Uh, and then um, I said, uh, I, I, said I, I think I just have high testosterone. And that's not me jerking myself off. I think that's just... I, I have almost all the um, signs of somebody with high testosterone. Almost all of them. Even the negative ones, unfortunately. And um, they said, nah, I think you just do it subconsciously. I think you just mute subconsciously. Like, bro, this terminally online brain rot bullshit has really gotten to people. It really has. Like, you asked if I did something. I said, no, I don't think that sounds real. And I'm telling you, that is not what I do. My tongue doesn't very... I don't touch the... I don't press the, my tongue against the roof of my mouth very often. I'm sorry, bro. That just, like, doesn't happen. And I'm saying, no, I think what would I... My, my physical traits that you're talking about can be explained better by actual science. And they go, nah, nah, you just mew. Oh, I'm glad you know me better than I do. Look at you. Then why'd you even ask, buddy? If you were so sure that that's what I do, then why did you even ask? And do you truly think that that is a better explanation? As to, like, you're going to ignore all the other the other traits that I display that, that 
you know, signal that I have high testosterone. You're gonna ignore all that other shit and just say, oh, well, nah, you just mew. All those other traits, you know, they're just whatever. Uh, nah, um, this is best explained by you mewing. Some shit I learned about on TikTok. People are so goddamn stupid and just insufferable, truly, they are. I feel like I get dumber the more I speak to people online. I feel like people online are, like, genuinely just goddamn stupid, you know? A lot of the people I counter online, I can I can tell when someone spends a lot of time online. I can tell. It's it's immediately apparent because they're goddamn brain dead. They they have extreme. I'm not gonna kill it because that rogue is creeping up. Oh goddamn it! I'm gonna bring it back to the rogue. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna bring it back. Come on, rogue. Get it. Get it. What are you doing? Kill it. Nice. There you go. Anyways, um, yeah. People are just stupid, man. I don't understand why testosterone and masculinity have such negative connotations in regards to men, even though it is associated with men. But, like, the word feminine doesn't when it's in regards to women. Isn't that funny? It all just ties back into the punching up thing, but isn't that so interesting? I think that's pretty interesting, you know? I, I think, uh, like, the manosphere and all, like, the red pill, hyper-masculine uh, bullshit has really ruined that uh those words you know like saying you're a masculine man is now like this negative thing it's like bad why would that be bad it's just you know it's just is what it is um it just shows how terminally online everybody is it, like actually it just shows how these aren't bad like being masculine is not a bad thing having high testosterone i, I wouldn't consider that a bad thing or just the word testosterone in general i wouldn't consider that a bad thing but but a lot of people do because their only ideas of it are like shit they've seen on TikTok or you use the word um, masculine and they immediately think of Andrew Tate because they spend all goddamn day online. And Andrew Tate is a whole another topic. But yeah, it's just so weird the way people perceive things. So unrealistic. It's not at all rooted in reality. I guess. They just spend all goddamn day eyes glued to I like how I'm saying this while playing World of Warcraft at 4 a.m. But, you know, they spend all goddamn day eyes glued to a screen just, like, energy. indulging in this just, just degenerate, brain-dead slop online. I and I may be playing World of Warcraft at 4 a.m., but I have never had TikTok on my goddamn phone. And I feel like it shows. Because I can tell immediately when someone, and when someone spends, like, hours a day on TikTok, I can just smell it i smell their stupidity radiating off of their membrane you know i can smell the rot their membrane deteriorating it's sickening it really is i think tiktok is some sort of goddamn um i don't know what it is like some sort of chinese bullshit to rot the brains of americans or something and it is working wonders let me tell you it is uh, screw chemical warfare or, you know, all this other nuclear warfare. Screw all that shit, man. They don't even need, like, boots on the ground in America to take us down. They're killing us from within, bro. They're rotting our brains. <laughs> it's like, I guess it's technological warfare. TikTok has truly ruined us. As, as a people, bro. As a people. TikTok has people doing some of the dumbest shit ever committed by humanity. On a regular basis. And now when people see some of the dumbest shit they've ever seen, they're not even surprised anymore. It's just regular, schmegular, old American behaviors. Or not even, it's not even exclusive to America, but I do feel like America is where you see it, like... So it's true colors. Because we have so much freedom, I feel like America has too much freedom, honestly. I never thought I'd say that. I think we have too many people. And... This many people with this much freedom, I think it is a recipe for disaster. I feel like we do need some sort of structure to keep things in line. Because um, I don't think this country was designed to, to house this many people with this much freedom. And we do see things crumbling. We do. Things are crumbling. Nobody can agree on anything because most people that live in this country aren't even from this country. So why would they have the same values as people from this culture in this country? And you have this very divided society with no particular identity because the identity has been lost over time. It's been uh, chipped and withered away. 
and then and then we just ignore all these problems and help ourselves cope with the inevitable i guess downfall of this country with shit like tiktok you know, it helps us forget that we are spiraling downward rapidly, and it's going to be a terrible thing. It just helps us cope with that. It helps us uh, forget that it is very much happening, and that it is all very real. It helps us, like, cope with these facts. These cold hard facts. Yeah. TikTok is, like, a medicine. You know? They help us reside within... The delusion, the dream, that, that everything is actually a-okay, and let's just laugh and make memes about it, and forget, forget the, uh, the serious nature of it all. Just, let's just laugh. Just laugh about it, man. Nothing is taken serious anymore, and I feel like that's also why, um, nobody in our country really seems to stand for anything. You know? We don't have a lot of, uh, I don't know values Not ready yet. that are like inherent to the american people I don't have we really energy. don't so many people are against the constitution at this point that it's just like you know do we have any values that are inherently american anymore not not i mean i don't feel so but but then again i live on the east coast where you know naturally those values have been lost where i live not because energy. um Certain circumstances, <laughs> but yeah, man. I can't maybe, maybe those. I'm, I'm sure those values are still strong, in like places in the Midwest and shit, like the Bible Belt and shit, for sure, right? I don't agree with like the radical values, honestly. I don't, I don't believe in any like radical side. I just want a nice, sweet middle ground. And I feel like a lot of people in our country they want like the political sides and stuff to like fit their specific. Um, that dude is so dead, bro. There's no way he's surviving that. I feel like a lot of people in this country want. I gotta help him, bro. Screw it. Who's the weakest one? Let's go and do it. Let's done this one. Not enough energy. I can't do that yet. Oh shit! Don't die. Nice, cool. But um, yeah. But yeah, man. Um, no political side can make everybody happy because so many people have so many different values. Like, not one. There's not one thing that can appease everybody. There, there needs to be sacrifices. You know, you have to make some sacrifices. That's just is what it is, man. It's, it's all there is to it. You got to make some, uh, got to make some sacrifices. But um, I feel like the right side of the political spectrum and the left side of the political spectrum are very radicalized on both ends. Maybe the left more, more so, I would say. But they're both very far on their side and i feel like there's not a lot of representation for people that kind of reside just in the middle just they, they just want a sweet sweet spot you know just a nice middle ground a, a side that can make you know both happy enough to shut up about it we don't really have that i feel like we don't really have that anymore man only the or i guess the, the ones with the loudest voices naturally are the far left and the far right the radicals they're the ones that speak the loudest and i, I feel um they really outshine more promising options more beneficial options like i something. guess for the people have a good one they really do be careful you have a lot of people with i guess i feel like they don't really have a voice or anybody to represent their beliefs which sucks i feel like i'm one of those people but then again, it is what it is. My vote means nothing in the end. And yeah, all there is to it. You gonna do cry by like little bitch boy? So if you guys enjoyed this, you know, I always want to hear y'all's feedback or read y'all's feedback, I should say. You know, I mean, I, I want to see what y'all think, you know. Sorry if a lot of things I were sa was saying was like very vague. I didn't want to... When I talk about certain topics, I want to be uh, very specific and deliberate in what I'm saying and the message I'm putting out there, especially on this platform. So unless I can actually like write about it and say precisely what I wish to say, um, I kind of dance around it. And I don't enjoy doing it, but I do. I think that's just the smartest way to approach it. And I feel like people who are like intuitive enough, uh, they understand what I'm saying. They understand the point I'm making without me really making the point. 
so yeah um but yeah i i don't i never really expect anybody to like listen this far or even watch these videos these are more for myself you know i've gotten some people complain about the length of the video or like just the rambling but have you ever considered the fact that it is simply just not for you you know like maybe the video is just not for you and that's all there is to it, it yeah it's an hour-long video of me talking on my goddamn channel no one's forcing you to click it or watch it all the way through nobody's doing that so leave me alone dog leave me be now let me do my thing these are more for me to watch when i'm older and i'll be like oh look how goof look how silly i was look how was silly young man look at this guy so silly so silly look at the things he said look at what he believed to be true at the time so silly so silly so yeah that's really all it is but i am very um grateful and happy that people listen here and there and find some sort of value in what i say i think that's awesome i don't expect it to last long but i'm not gonna lie the last time i posted one of these it got like what 1.6k views i didn't think that shit was gonna break 260 views so that was a lot more than i expected i don't think this one will get nearly as many views but you know th this is just things that i want to look back when i'm older this is like me journaling I don't have like a diary or a journal or anything to write things in. I have my YouTube channel. That's what I want to use this for. And that's what it was originally created for. So if you feel like these videos aren't speaking to you, um, they're not. And that's okay. I have videos that will speak to you. You know, I videos that are the reason you subbed. Gaming videos and stuff like that. You know, brain dead bullshit. But sometimes I just want some real shit on my channel. You know, like something of substance. I think my intelligence my voice and things like this are all wasted on just sitting there and screaming at a goddamn video game all goddamn day I, I truly believe that i feel like i do have a certain ability to you know um say things that people have maybe been thinking even subconsciously and they haven't ever heard out loud or, or they maybe they're even too afraid to say it out loud and I don't want to waste that opportunity to speak to people that feel like they're not being spoken to or feel unheard I want to speak to those people. I want to. I want people to um, be able to have something to relate to outside of just me sitting down and playing a game. I don't feel like that's the best use of my time. I just feel like that's uh, some of the easiest content to make. But I don't want to just make easy content. You know, I want to make content of substance, something meaningful, because that's uh, that's what lasts. That's timeless content. You know, that's the shit you look back uh, 15 years from now and. There may still be some truth in the outdated words. And that's what I want. I want to see how much of what I say stands true 15 years that. from now. That's what I want. I don't give a shit about Not playing right. goddamn video games. That doesn't mean shit to me. It doesn't... You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Like and sub for more. It really helps if you guys comment, really helps with the algorithm, and I'm very curious to see what y'all think and what y'all say. A lot of people have some very uh, profound and interesting things to say, and I love reading y'all's comments. I don't get to all of them, I can't respond to all of them because I do not have the time between like Xbox messages and Instagram DMs and all the comments I get. Um, it's not me ignoring you, I, I just don't have the time to get to everybody, but um, it's very interesting to read. Uh, some very smart people watch my videos and it fascinates me to see um see what they think you know i know i said i'm not a very social person but i don't want that to be confused I, I, and i know i said i also you know don't tend to like a lot of people but that doesn't mean that i don't find people incredibly interesting because i did say that i do like to observe and analyze people and i do i like to um people interest me a lot People, I think, are the most interesting thing about life. You know, it's people. And, yeah, I find women especially interesting. I I, I, I could maybe get into that, like, in another video. But um, just people in general, their minds, their behaviors, what they do and why they do it, what they think and why they think it, their origins, where they're going and where they've come from. I find it all very interesting. People are so fascinating to me. And perhaps it is because I don't relate to them very well. I do kind of see them as aliens. And wouldn't you be very interested in an alien if you saw one? So that, I guess that's that. That's maybe why I, I find people so interesting. But yeah, I think that people are the most interesting thing in my life. And I live to uh, really to study people and uh, understand them. And 
Yeah. I I, I really am interested in what you guys have to say. So yeah. Always makes my day when I see a lot of comments to read. Especially when I'm just laying in bed or like in between sets at the gym. Just you know, it's just like really cool to like read and respond to people's comments and stuff, you know? It's really fun. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm just gonna play WoW for uh ten more hours. Waste my life away. And yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed, man. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy. Peace.